Well, student, in the previous session, uh, you people learned uh, the types, various types of sets. When we even discussed equality of the sets, uh, according to equality of the sets, they can be termed equal in case they have equal number of elements and those elements have to be exactly the same. Whatever element is appearing in one set should be in the second set also and whatever is there in the second set should be an element of first set as well. Now, let us, this is a special case. Uh, case of equal sets is a particular case of equivalent sets. You will see how. Now, if I say two sets are equivalent, it means that the number of elements in one set and the number of elements in the other set have to be equal. See, when we were talking about equal sets, we said not only the numbers are equal, they are exactly the same. So, if they are exactly the same, obviously the number will also be equal. So, we can say equal sets are also equivalent, but not other ways it will may be true. We cannot say equivalent sets are equal. Every uh, two sets which are equal are also equivalent, but equivalent sets may not be equal. See, what does it say? Two finite sets A and B are said to be equivalent if and only if they contain equal number of elements. This is the notation for uh, two equivalent sets. You can see I have taken one example. A contains first five natural numbers. So num this is the notation for number of elements in A. So number of elements in A are five. B is taken as having the five vowels. So again number of elements in B are five. So we can say the set A and B are equivalent. But we cannot call them equal because these five five elements which they both are having they are not exactly the same, okay? So, equivalent sets may be equal sets, they may not be equal sets. In general, they are not equal sets, but every two equal sets are equivalent, okay? Now, uh, I yesterday I gave you an assignment based on these basic definitions. Today, we will take some more examples of the same type from the exercise 1.2. You can see... You can uh, quickly apply the definitions and uh, respond to them. The first one says which of the following sets are null set. Uh, two examples I have taken here. First one is set of odd natural numbers divisible by 2. So firstly we know that odd natural numbers are not divisible by 2. So obviously this is an example of a null set. We are not going to get any element in this set. So, it is a null set. Next one, set of even prime numbers. You will see there is exactly one prime number which is even. Rest of the prime numbers are odd. So, if I try to write this set, I will be able to write one element in this set. So, therefore, not a null set. Got it? Okay, so you can easily make out whether there will be any element in the set or not. If there isn't any element, obviously it is a null set. Now the next one, it says which of the sets are finite or infinite. We know how to make out whether the set is finite or infinite. See the first one. These are first three natural numbers written here. Rest marked by the dots. So that means we are talking about the set of natural numbers. We know what is the smallest natural number, but the largest one is not known because it is an infinite set. Here. Then the next one, the set of prime numbers less than 99. Now this becomes a finite set because we can list all the prime numbers less than 99. We will be knowing the smallest uh, prime number and we will be knowing the largest prime number and the list can be counted also. So we can write it as a finite set. Again, the next one is about checking whether it is finite or infinite. I'll try to draw here for the same. See for the first one. The set of lines parallel to x-axis. So if I draw a Cartesian plane here, you can easily visualize 
that parallel to this axis you can make as many lines as possible see this is one line parallel to x axis another third fourth and in between these two two lines infinitely many lines can be drawn which will be parallel to the x axis so this is an example of an infinite set okay next one set of circles through origin even this is an example of infinite set you can see again if this is our cartesian plane one of the circle i am going to draw here with a center origin center origin they are saying no they are saying set of the circles through origin so the circle should be passing through 0 0 That means zero comma zero will lie on it. Okay, so we'll draw it in such manner. See, this is one example of a circle which is passing through the origin. But passing through this point, you will be able to draw as many circles as possible. Look at this one. See, this is also a circle passing through origin. I can have a circle here also. Many more over here. or on the other side along the other axis as well see it can be this way also so you can easily visualize that we cannot have limited number of circles passing through 0 0 there will be infinite such cases so again an example of an infinite set clear then see the fourth one it talks about checking whether the given sets are equal or not okay a uh, set a is having alphabet small a b c and d when we come to the set b it also contains c d b and a what is the only difference in both if you see the elements are exactly the same the order is different but we all know when we list elements in a set order is not important they can be written in any order so you can see a is an element of capital a it is element of capital b b is element of capital a b is element of set b also c is element of set a c is element of set b as well then d is element of set a d is element of set b also we don't have any other element in both the sets so we can say a is a set equal to b then the next one Set A is given to be having elements four, eight, twelve, and sixteen. B is having elements eight, four, sixteen, and eighteen. So we will quickly check whether all the elements of A are in B and the elements of B are in A or not. Four is available at both the places. A is available at both the places, but you can see twelve does not belongs to B. In the same way, eighteen does not belongs to set A. So we can write. A is not equal to B, and we can justify also because twelve does not belongs to B, and eighteen does not belongs to A. We could locate one one element in both the sets which were not belonging to the other set. Okay, next one. A is having even numbers two, four, six, eight, and ten. B is written in set builder form. It says it contains elements x, where x will be denoting positive even integer. Mark this part. This is important. Positive even integer less than and or equal to ten. So ten is also included here. So start counting what all these numbers are. Smallest positive even integer will be two. Then we will have four. We will have six. We will have eight, and we will also include. 10 so exactly the same elements as in a so we can say that set a is equal to set b okay then taking some questions from fifth question number 5 which is again about checking whether the given pair of sets are equal state whether given sets are equal and you are asked to justify also so you will explain if they are not equal what is the reason why they are not equal first set a in the first part a contains two numbers 2 and 3 then set b is the other set 
which is defined as x such that x is solution of an equation which is given to be x square plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. So we need to solve the equation in set B and see uh, what are the possible elements of B. If we quickly simplify this by splitting the middle term which you have learnt in your previous classes, you will see the two factors will be x plus 2 and x plus 3 and product of these two is 0. That means either x plus 2 is 0 or x plus 3 is 0. So this implies either x plus 2 is 0 which means x is minus 2 or x plus 3 is 0 which means x is minus 3. So what else can we write for B? B will contain the elements minus 2, minus 3. Now you check both. Are they both same? You can easily make out the elements in both the sets are not same. So we can write A is not equal to B. And you can quickly justify as 2 comma 3 does not belong to B. That means neither 2 nor 3 is belonging to B as well. Minus 2 and minus 3, they don't belong to A. So we have justified why we are saying they both cannot be equal. Now see the next part of the same. Set A is denoted by the letter X where X is a letter from the word follow. F O L L O W. And then B is denoted by Y, where Y is a letter from the word wolf. Okay, see. Let us try to list them and then check whether they both are same or not. I will write the letters involved in this word. F is there, O is there, then L. L is repeated, we will write it only once. O is repeated which we have already written and then it is W. Okay, coming to set B. You can see each letter in the word wolf is appearing only once. So we need to write all of them. Now you compare set A and B, you will find set A is equal to set B. Because every element of A is in B and every element of B is in A. So by now you must have understood the concept of equal sets. Okay, and uh, what null set is, what is a singleton set, understood. So uh, the next topic in the next session we will take will be about the subsets.